Hey everybody, this is B-Word of the Bleach Brothers Podcast. Before we get into today's episode, I want to bring your attention to our link tree. Please visit linktree slash bleach bros podcast for the links to all of our socials, streaming sites, and merch. Linktree is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash bleach bros podcast, all one word. If you enjoy our content, make sure to give us a like and give us a review on whatever platform you're listening to us on. Also, invite your friends. And with that, let's get started with the show. What's up, Salty Hippo Nation? This is Aaron from the I Had to Say It podcast, and you are listening to the bleach bros podcast with b word and jake stick around for the dirty talk and don't forget to get sanitized Welcome in to the Bleach Brothers Podcast. This is Jake the Hater with B-Word. B-Word, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, man. You uh, you carried us on the last episode uh, because of my voice. My voice is not dramatically better this week, but it's getting better. And uh, you're going to carry us again. And I appreciate the fact that you can put my fat ass on your shoulders and carry us through this. I was going to say, do you think you could lift me up? I can lift you up 100%. Like, that's how we became friends. Yeah. You can't. Yeah. I know I could lift you up. I th- you might shit yourself, but you could probably do it. That's that yeah, I don't know. I I I don't want to get hurt. Right? Do you think do you think all right, all right, let me ask you a question. Like if you were doing something, like li- right, like you're saying I would shit myself, right? Like lifting you up. Do you think I would get a hernia first or I'd shit my face? I think that you would blow your lower intestine through your anus. Like your sphincter, Ooh, that sounds your painful. sphincter would probably break. I would never be the same, right? No, I mean you you could probably let your wife turn into a tranny and finish the job, but but at the end of the day, no, no, that's, that's no, not. no, 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 no. I mean, I, look, Stop dude, it. whatever it takes, right? Love Avengers, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever it takes. Like, sickness, sickness, and itself. yes. The sickness is underlying. Yes, here. yes. That sounds so. Dude, horrible. I was at your. That sounds. So I was horrible. at your wedding. I am pretty confident that somewhere in the vows, it said whatever it takes, and being that I was a witness there, like you and your wife can say that it didn't happen, whatever. But I witnessed it verbatim. Let me let me just put that in there now too for the record. So yeah, if your if your wife you know decided to uh, to become a wit wiki, you'd be just fine, dude. For better, for worse. I, I I do remember at my wedding, I got in a little trouble because remember when they asked me if I do and I stat. There yeah, you paused. At the ceiling went, hey. And I know, I know. Because <laughs> I'm a jackass. I know the funny thing was, is that you were doing it to be funny. And I know that Katie knew that you were doing it to be funny. But the crowd, the crowd did not know that you Nobody were doing else it to be funny. Like, I thought it was hilarious. No. Your brother thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, Vermont Greg thought it was, was hilarious. Aaron thought it was hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah, no. And what was funny was, too, is like the way that we were positioned, like we're on the sides of you, right? But we're also kind of mm-hmm. curved around. So like we're facing the other bridal party, right? And so like I'm looking at her bridesmaids, which is her sister and I think a friend and your sister and right, mm-hmm. whatever. And when you paused, like I looked at her friend because I was more, more unfamiliar with her friend than anybody else, right? And – her friend's eyes just kind of like got a little bigger. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Here we go. Here we go. And then you're like, yeah. Did you know I did you know I had original plans, though, for my wedding? Like, I originally tried to order a seven foot scroll. A seven foot scroll. Yeah, I wanted a scroll. Like, you know, like you went back in the day, they'd open it up. Was there I a significance so, about the seven feet? Because I wanted it to roll on the ground. Oh. I wanted it like so we were gonna write our own vows and I wanted to like be a jackass and like have my brother hand it to me and then have it roll on the ground into the crowd and then the crowd think I was really gonna read all of that shit. And then it was just gonna say yes. <laughs> I think that you should have done whatever you wanted to do. Your wedding turned out just Well, we fine. didn't write vows. That's why that happened. Like if we would have wrote vows, my wife knew that I was gonna do something like that. Uh, but she was afraid to write vows with me because she said uh, she's like, you're such a good speaker in front of people. Like, like you know, I can just go off the cuff. And she's like, you're going to do so well. And I'm very nervous. And she goes, so no matter what you do, it's going to be funny, hilarious, empathetic, anything, whatever, right? 
And so she asked, please do not write her own vows because she was so nervous about it. And the whole time I'm thinking, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to have a seven foot scroll and just put yes on it. <laughs> That's so funny. That's so funny. Because I'm a jackass. I really like that idea. That's that's actually hilarious. I uh, speaking of vows, I really enjoyed um, the movie with Bernie Mac and Ashton Kutcher. It's called Guess Who. You ever seen that? Where um, it's with Zoe Saldana, Ashton Kutcher no. is Zo- Zoe Saldana's boyfriend, no. and and Bernie Mac's her dad. Anyway, Bernie Mac and his wife are having like a twenty five year renewal ceremony or something, or thirty year or whatever it is. And his wife wants him to write um, legitimate vows. And he's having an issue with it because he's having a hard time coming up with the words. So he ends up writing down, baby, turn around and let me see that sexy body go boom, boom, boom. What's wrong with that? And it's hilarious, dude. It's absolutely hilarious. It it, it does remind me of Meet the Meet the Fockers or... or uh, Meet the parents, I guess, is what it was, but it's it's the more oh, I hate that movie. It's the more cultural I, one, I suppose. I hate Meet the Parents. That is that that movie that makes you feel bad in your stomach. Like I hate movies that make you feel like an embarrassing moment like, that is never ending. Like it's horrible. That's a horrible movie. Like why do people like that movie? B word. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's. I could take it or leave it. Occasionally, I'll watch it, but I could take it or leave it. Do you like Ben Ben Stiller though? I like him in two movies. I like him uh, in Heavyweights, and I like him in Dodgeball. I like him in There's Something About Mary, just because he's a putz when he zips his dick. Yeah, yeah, the Frank of the Beans. That's that's. But that's all. Like I don't care about the rest of it. But like he, I don't know. He just always bugged me. I don't know. I'm not a big Ben Stiller guy. Mm. So speaking of Ben Stiller, are there parts of United States history that you think that Ben Stiller should not be a part of? You know what I love sometimes on this show? Like the segues are one or the other. They're either so good that it fits or you go, speaking of Ben Stiller, the Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. (laughs) So that's, that's the question again. I'm on Ben Stiller moment. Like you said, Ben Stiller. And I'm like thinking, ah, uh, yeah, I, I don't. So we have a, we, we have a, an intro. Actually, it's something we've never done before on this podcast, but we have a, we have a rundown basically talking about history and you and I are really big history right. buffs, but I really just wanted, I didn't know how to get away from Ben Stiller. And so rather than just trying to find a transition, like this is the transition. So it was eloquently not done very well. Um, but, okay. but uh, so, so let's talk about, let's talk about a little bit about history. So you and I are both history buffs. I think we both really enjoyed actually history in school. I, I know I really did. Um, even though ironically history while we were in school involved, Mr. Tucker's class, uh, that we would show up randomly and then go We'd get go Taco to McDonald's. Bell. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we would leave. We would, we would get a note to go to the library and then we'd go get food. Yeah, exactly. And then we'd come back. And we'd be like, oh, yeah, there was a meeting with the choir class at McDonald's. He'd be like, oh, okay. And he would just sign us every day. So Mr. Tucker looked exactly like um, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders. 100%. Like, I tell people this. Eventually, I'll have to find his photo and post it because he looked 100% like Colonel Sanders. Like, when when the uh, – was it the water boy with the Medulla Oblongata guy? Like, you know, you're um, – you know, the reason why alligators are so mad is because they have so many teeth and not enough toothbrushes or something like that. And he's like, you know, you're wrong water boy or whatever. He says, that's who he looked like, except for Tucker was thinner than that guy. So he looked a lot like Colonel Sanders, but I don't know. I even liked, you know, I liked Tucker's class for what, what I paid attention to it. I liked, um, I liked a lot about history growing up. And I think as I've, as I've gotten older, I've liked, I like a lot more history history shows and things that I think I probably didn't realize that I would like. What about you? I love history. I like learning about the past. Um, I am not geographically smart. So like you asked me where things were, don't really know time periods. Yeah. But I, I, I find history to be a significant thing. Like, like it's good to know where you come from. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's good to know where you're going to go in the future. Like, like I even love things like ancient aliens. Yeah. Like fascinates me. Like I think the past fascinates me so much because 
it's one of those things like we have a record of it, but we still don't really know, mm-hmm. which is like intriguing, right? Like I, I'm more about the past and the future. Now, mind you, if I had a time machine, I ain't going to the past. I'd rather go to the future and just see the end. But like history to me is very important. I, I think it's also though too, because we're very prideful. I mean, me and you are very patriotic, very prideful in our country. And we're a young country. And I think that it's easier to be that way. And I'm not saying like, you know, English people aren't prideful of their country and stuff. They have a long history, but I, I don't know. I feel very connected to the whole, like as an American growing up, I felt connected to 1776. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Like it, it doesn't seem that far off. Right. Like we learned very in depthly about our history and it makes it seem like it's further back than it actually is. And the older you get, you realize, wow, it's not really that far back. Yeah, it's no, it's we're still pretty young in the whole scheme of things. Um, and it's interesting, too, because like I, you know, recently I, I was able to go to Boston. And when you start talking about old, old history in Boston, you're really talking about 400 years, maybe, of, of recordable history, for primarily recordable history. And 400 years isn't really a whole lot. When I went to Italy, no, we're talking thousands upon thousands of years of records. And that fascinates me. And, and I, I don't know, man. I think I, I love history in general and I like things like Egypt and, um, Italy and Spain and, and Britain and all that sort of stuff. But I think I prefer American history over all of that. Not to say that I don't enjoy that just because it, it is something that I'm connected to. Like I have a vested interest in it. Do you kind of see the same or do you prefer world history over? American history. I think it depends on the time period. Like I prefer American history. I think with, with where we're at, like, you know what I mean? Like, like more for more modern stuff. But like, if I want to look at world history, I look at like very, very far off times. Like the Bible really intrigues me. Right. Dinosaurs really intrigue me. Like things that we don't have a lot of historical record on like Egyptians, right? Like there's hieroglyphs and like we say we know what they mean, but we do we really know because we don't even know what the fucking pyramids are for. Right. right? Like those things intrigue me. But if you're going to go, I think anything and it's going to sound weird, but like 1600 above, it's like, yeah, America all the way. Okay. Yeah, I can see that. So and, and I think the reason is, too, is because I, you know, I have Native American history. Um, I have Native American roots. So, so I, I guess, I don't know, man, I guess I just, I feel like I personally have more ties to that, even though I have, you know, family lineages that, that belong to multiple different uh, areas and, and ge- geographical locations and whatever else. Um, is there a time period of U.S. history that fascinates you the most? Uh, Civil War. Really? I think it's one of the most... I, I think it's because it's the it was the brink of our young country almost falling apart and seeing how it had to come together afterwards, even when you didn't agree. Right. Like being somebody who like everybody's called a contrarian, a hater, whatever, right? Like I can find ways to still get along and agree with you, even though I might voice my opinion in a hateful way or whatever. Like and I think it's interesting to see how we came out of it. Like there's still like some fault lines from it and everything, right? Yeah. That have happened. But out of all the things in our I think it was one of the most important periods in the sense of how much came out of it in all factors. Like like I think the start of the country, seventeen seventy six, Bald Eagle Freedom Party, Hot Dogs America Forever, right? Like the Constitution. There's like they wrote like the laws of the land and how we are gonna grow and be. But the shape of our nation changed of how we were going to move forward with that, like be it states being developed, people moving west, people being freed, you know, two parts of the country having to come together that had so much disagreement, so much bloodshed, so much death. Right. And, I, and that's that's probably my favorite time period. I guess after that, though, if you're just looking like not just the sense of like historical reference of wartime and all that. I'm really into the 20s through the 40s. Okay. Seeing how people worked hard and got through a depression and and I don't know, it's like it's it's one of those things like I I think we fantasize about the past, right? Like, oh man, if I was like I watched Mad Men, right? I love that fucking show. And I always imagine like I'm a salesman, right? Like, oh, I'd be so I'd be the king back then. Like I would love to live in that time, but then I also realized like it's centralized for TV. It's probably not as great as I'm making it out to be. Like it looks great on TV, like you know, but 
But it's still a time period that intrigued me because I feel like that's when that one I could afford a house on one salary. Right. <laughs> I could have I could have the the American dream, right? That we were like that I think is I think that's why for us as dads especially that's the time period we we gravitate towards because we've always went for the American dream and that's when it felt possible and that's where it came from. So that's why it's very important to me. So you you brought up the Civil War. I I think it's fascinating that you look at that time period because just just looking at years it's about 75 years of, of, of forward in history from when our country founded documents for our country right so to put that into perspective that's basically like right now back to 1950 we talk about 1950 as if it was not that long ago like we didn't you and I didn't experience 1950 1960 1970 but those were from the eras of our parents or our grandparents where they were brought in, brought up through that time frame. So it wasn't uncommon for us to be told stories or uh, have values passed down or talk about what it was back in the day or whatever else, right? Looking back at the Civil War, there were so many different factors involved in the Civil War to get the Civil War to be the Civil War. We always talk about slavery. Slavery was a part of it. It wasn't the the entirety of it. There was a lot politically that was going on. There was a lot monetarily that was going on. And also I find it I find it fascinating too because you and I, we had a guest spot on um, the Jake and the Dingus show uh, last year where we were ranking holidays and our favorite holiday to hate was fuck tax day. And like you and I, like as patriotic as we are, we fucking hate taxes. Did you know that the very first time that taxes were implemented were under Abraham Lincoln? And it was to, exactly. it was to pay back for the cost of the Civil War, and really, when you when you start looking at some of these tax situations, that was kind of the pattern through each war, is that that's when taxes would be implemented, and then once the debt was paid off, then the taxes would go away, and then the federal taxes, of course, and so when when you get into the 1920s, the 1930s you start dealing with taxes because you know you had World War One, you're going into World War Two. There was a lot of costs involved with that that they actually made taxes permanent. And that's something that I kind of feel like we as a country failed right there for a number of reasons. And I don't really want to get all too political on that, but just fa- fascinating, fascinating scars in our history for sure. Well, it's funny because we all joke that like, or we all talk about like how the country was founded because we didn't like the taxes and tariffs from an overseeing government and then became an overseeing government with taxes and tariffs. Right. It just pisses me off. Right. Yeah. 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 Fuck that tea, by the way. Actually. What about you? So. What about you? So real quick, I'll I'll answer that. But real quick, I do want to say I I was able to try some of the teas in Boston when I was there that, that, that they actually had had. Obviously not the same tea, but the same recipe of tea uh, that they, they had actually had back in that day. The tea was pretty damn good, dude. I'm not going to lie. Um, so as long as it's not taxed, that's good. You know, for me, I when I start looking at history, American history specifically, I really like the Old West. And not in a sense where I, I like it. Uh, the shootouts and the the way that, let's say, Native Americans were treated or the way that, um, you know, the Chinese were, tre- were treated as they came over and worked on the railroads or, you know, like my family, we were Italian, um, the way that they were treated in agriculture and or the Irish, how they were treated. I think that there's a lot of discrepancies in the way that people were treated throughout history. And I don't like that. However, the one thing that I really enjoy learning about about history is the 1800s, kind of that time frame, but in the West, um, I really enjoy learning about um, the the railroads and why they were built and like the battle between the Union Pacific and the, I forget what the other one's called, but like they were, who's going to lay the most track and then how they connected at Promontory Point in Utah and, and, and all that sort of stuff. And I just... I think it's fascinating because I think prior to the Industrial Revolution, this was really one of those areas where society built out of necessity more than it built out of pleasure. And then you started to see more of the being of of things being built out of pleasure. And let me break that down a little bit. 
you look at towns like right so so Tombstone is a very famous town in Arizona for uh for the movie for for um Wyatt Earp and all that sort of stuff Doc Holliday the reason why Tucson was there was not because people decided oh we're going to settle in Tucson Tucson was there as a working town based off of whatever the commerce was so they had things like brothels they had things like bars they had things like casinos to entertain the workers to entertain the workforce and you find a lot of these settlements were there out of necessity meaning that they needed a place to stay and then they built pleasure on top of that i'm unsure if that's been a commonality throughout society where you find that people uh, take these towns whether they stay there or not we have ghost towns in the in the united states that i'm not aware of that they have them overseas across the pond but i just i'm so fascinated with that timeline because you look at how things worked and then how things didn't work and then how society and the leadership within that time frame had to adjust to things not working to find find out how things work i just think it was a really creative time in society and for that reason, I like to explore that more than just, you know, different social trends during that time. Well, I'd agree. I mean, it's like when you were saying like the, you know, Industrial Revolution, we used to build for the betterment of the country rather than the betterment of your own man. Like, it's funny because like I love the History Channel, right? They have tons of shows on there of like the men who built America, mm-hmm. the food that built America and all that. And th- those ones fascinate me. I, I, I fell into the food that built America first. Mm-hmm. And the funny thing is, if you if you haven't watched these and you do, they all sort of like intertwine with each other because you start to see like the big families like Ford and everybody that blew up and created things. But at the time, yes, it was to make themselves rich and capitalism and all that. But it was also they were doing things that they never saw before right. to make the country better. It wasn't like they came out going... Ford wasn't like everybody needs a car for luxury. It was everybody needs a car to get around more. Right. Everybody needed a railroad so you can get across the country better with the transcontinental railroad lines that you were talking about. People needed cereal for um, an ailment was originally the thing. And then they went, oh, we can make money at it. And then the, that all that all happened from it. But it is interesting that you say that because I feel like when a culture or society hits a certain level, right it becomes more about internal wealth rather than um country wealth if that makes sense Mm -hmm. like like i am like the country like you were saying taxes didn't exist until the civil war to pay it back but then after they did there were no more taxes and people put more forth like to how can we make this country better for the next generation and now it feels like how can i get a new sofa in my house for tomorrow yeah and that that that's a weird a weird change. I think that's why, like when we talk about history, I don't I don't ever really want to talk about today. And it's not that I'm a miserable person, but I don't find anything changing in the aspects that I'm enjoying, like to where I'm looking forward to 50 years. However, I feel people in the 20s when they were getting out of the depression, they were like, "We have stuff to look forward to." And I don't, I, I think that's hard for our generation. Like, what are we looking for? So I have to correct you there. The 20s um, was the Roaring 20s. And Sorry, that, yeah, yeah, right. and, yeah, and and there's a lot of success in there, but but it was really quick to fail too with the with the depression. Now, to answer your question, as far as like the the, the societal view of progress, I guess is is really how you can overarch that. Um, I, man, I think I think things are cyclical, and the problem is is that when you look at our society. And you look at the history, we really only have like 400 years worth of history um, documented. And that being the case, when you're when you're looking at like learning from things and then changing and growing and then then making mistakes and learning from things again. I think that when you look at like the 20s, as an example that you brought up, it became a, a time of irresponsibility and gluttony. And if you look. There were some other things that happened in the 20s that were pretty fascinating, too, with like prohibition. Uh, you know, they were trying to take things away from people to try to calm society down. And you look now and we kind of are in that same same sense. I mean, you have certain states that allow drugs just to run rampant with no enforcement 
And now you have certain cities that have been like these drug havens that are now trying to ban drugs. Like they're learning from the effects of it. So I don't know. I mean, I, I guess my observation is, is that society is cyclical, but that's also why I don't really, I, I mean, I, I, I like to reflect what I've learned or what I, what I took away from history to modern day. I don't like to necessarily study modern history to, to study it, if that makes sense. No, it makes sense. I, I get it. I just, I don't know. I just, I feel that we tend to now look more at the past than the future. Mm -hmm. um, and I think because all of us think the future is bleak. And it's funny because when we were growing up, we looked at the past just, and I mean, we were young, but you looked at the past of like, okay, that's where we were. Where are we going to go? And now it seems like more people are like, how can we go back? Yeah, I do think that there are things about the past that, um, that intrigue people. I mean, we, we've talked separately about social media where social media has done a great job with like networking people. You and I don't live close to each other. So we can keep in touch on social media. We can record this podcast through the internet. We can see each other virtually. We can talk over the telephone. There are ways that we can communicate now that would, would have been impossible. Like if we lived in these two different areas and never traveled to see each other, like you and I would never have this relationship that we have today back in, let's say the, the early 1900s, but fast forward a hundred years, here we are. Right. So I do think that there's progress in that where you can, where you can say, okay, like there are certain things that allow us to do that, but they also have side effects. Like you look at the, I don't know. I guess when I look at history, historical time periods, whether it be in America or whether it be, you know, world history, I find that the simplest of societies had the best mental health. And what I mean by that is, is that sun, sun wakes me up. I need to go hunt. I go hunt. I bring home food. I have wife. Wife has kids. We have food together. We go to sleep at night. We wake up. It's a simple thing. I think that there's that humanity part of it, though, where we always want to be more. We always want to be different. We might want to keep up with the Joneses now with progress and with material items and whatever. But back then, we may have wanted to keep up with the Uga Boogas, right? And so we wanted to have the most circular rock. We wanted to have the best fire. We wanted to have the, you know, whatever it is. I do think right. that that's the part of humanity that we're scarred with. That same part of humanity is is almost like a... Um, uh, a black mark, if you will, on humanity in a sense where we will always never be satisfied. And I think that, That's again, true. when it, when you simplify society, when you look at Native American tribes, when you look at African Aborigine tribes, when you look at some of these things where it is very much that social structure that's confined to that small uh, populace, you find that mental health is amazing. However, you put somebody in, you know, the heartbeat of New York and you tell them that you have to go get a job and you have to afford your house and you have to deal with all the crime around you and you have to deal with all the societal pressures and you have to do this and you have to do that. All of a sudden, this guy wants to jump off the Empire State Building. So it's like, yeah. at what point does society actually like make sense for people? And I do think that there's a happy medium there where you can enjoy some of the modern things. But, but reflecting back on the past, like if we didn't have social media, what would that do for us on, from a mental health thing? What would that do for young girls today that are dealing with body image issues? What would that, you know, so I think, again, learning, learning through, through history, we're talking about society, societal issues now, but learning through history and seeing things within certain time periods, I think, I think we have all the right in the world to be able to reflect on that and say, man, I really wish that was the case now. Well, good point. I mean, when you're bringing up societal issues, it's like the next question is going to be what time period in American history would you rather live in? And it's a different answer for us socially, if we can be up, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're straight white, male, white males. Right. And that, that change, that can change the answer with multiple people. But let me ask you, Bjorn, if you can live in any part of American history, where are you moving? What, what time? You period? know, we had, we, we talked about that, um, when we, when we came up with this rundown and I've really been trying to rack my brain on what that would be. I think my answer would be the wild West. Um, because I think that that was a, it's funny because I talk about some of the issues that there was 
with, you know, some of the racism and some of the, the, there wasn't, there wasn't much in the way of slavery per se in the wild west, but there was a lot of oppression still that was happening with multicultural people, whether it was Asians or whether it was native Americans or whether it was Hispanics or Irish or whatever it might be. Right. So you still had that time of oppression and I don't want to discount that and say, I'd love to live in society where, you know, we have all this ingenuity, but then you have to acknowledge that there's all that racism. Right. Um, so I, I, my answer would be that it would be, you know, probably the late 1800s because I think when you start looking at some of the modern marvels to use a, to use a television show name that were created from that time period. And assuming, let's say you were born in like the 1870s and you live to be 50 years old, you're now 1920. The amount of change in society that you had during that time period, I think just would have been absolutely fascinating. And I think that that would have been really cool to be on the, be be on the bleachers and seeing that, but also having the opportunities that we would have had back then. Again, I don't want to say this and say, okay, there wasn't racism, there wasn't this, there wasn't that. I want to acknowledge that all of that was there. If my skin color was different, I don't know that I would choose that. I'm going to be flat honest with you. I don't think that, you know, some of our friends that we have that are that are multicultural, that come from different backgrounds, you talk about 1800s for a black guy, that's a that's a bad time period, dude. Like, especially depending on where you're located. Are you in the deep South? Are you in New York city? Are you in Washington state? I mean, there's, there's some differences in, in, in how you'd be treated. Right. So I, I, for me, I would choose the the wild West and I would choose somewhere in the West. I don't know what state, but let's say Colorado West somewhere. Okay. What about you? See, I, I alluded to mine. I'm somewhere in the fifties. Um, that time period, I could go on to hate hippies through the sixties. Um, hate the Beatles and whatever, but I, I think, you know, I thrive in that period. I just really feel that way. Um, it's, it's the one that intrigues me the most. I don't want to go without technology. Right. Like, cause at first I was like, as a joke, I was like, oh, I'd be great during the birth of America. Cause I could really hate on Brits and all that, but I don't want to live in a time period where modern medicine's not around. Like, like you die of bullshit. Like, you could yeah. die from bullshit. Yeah. Like, you could drink the wrong water and be dead from diarrhea, essentially. Like, yeah. I don't want that. Like, I understand things can happen every day. But if I'm going to die, I'd rather die from a Buick running me over because an old lady doesn't know what she's doing rather than an ox steps on my foot and I just, you know, I bleed out with gangrene. Like, that. that's the difference. So I want to be in some form of modern technology uh, the country's already there. Now, I'll say it this way, too, B-Word. If you could live in any other period outside of American history, where are you living? That's a great question. I think I would have to live there specifically out of curiosity, but it would be the Roman times under the Caesars. And the reason why I would want to live during that time frame is because I would be interested to see what it, what the Colosseum would look like at capacity with you know the gladiator games going i would love to see what society looked like and how they built their filtration systems and their their underwater aquifers and and all of the plumbing that still works to this day um i would love to be able to see it i would love to see how society was kind of made how some of the politics were done at the time um and also what that looked like i mean we we can watch game of thrones right i think that game of thrones probably um, gives us a closer look. I'm not going to say to that time period, but just probably what we imagine that time period to look like, right? And I think that that's okay. But when it comes to like the ingenuity of it all, and the and the the coming up with new ideas, and the and the you know the cobblestone streets that stand to this day, and I think I just think that that would be fascinating to watch that. I don't know what that would look like for me in that society. Um, I am Italian, so. Uh, you know, assuming that that I was Italian back then and Roman and whatever, that might work out fine. But the Italian in me is Tuscan. It's not really Roman. So, I mean, it, it is a little bit different. Like, I'm not Sicilian, like all of that sort of stuff. So, I don't know, man. That's probably what I would like to see. Either that or I'd like to see the pyramids being built. But other than that, what about you? Yeah, like I, I think I, when I when I thought of this question... I was thinking of like what marvels do I want to see? Like I would love to see dinosaurs, right? 
I would love to see monuments go up, like all the ones that we wonder about, right? Like all the seven wonders of the world and stuff like that. But then I went, what type of adventures do I want to have? And so I guess I would live like in the 1500s when pirates were pretty rampant. Oh, there you go. Like now, mind you, B-word, this is this is coming from me where I'm afraid of deep water. I don't like boats. But I feel like if I wouldn't have a choice back then, right? Like I would do that lifestyle. Like I love the show Black Sails and that. And I, like I said, I know that's over centralized and what I'm thinking actually happens, happens. But maybe in a past life different. That or or the frontier times, like the 1700s where I could go live in like, where I could own so much land and every like almost like homesteading, people can leave me alone. Like I can go live up in the wilderness, like of Yellowstone and stuff, and nobody's gonna bother me. Those would be the time periods I'd want. I know I'm not setting like an exact date, but I'm I'm sort of going for like how the land was and how people were okay. to go to. Um now now it does make a difference. Like if I had a time machine and I could go back and see things, like I would love to see like the creation, right? I would love to see dinosaurs. As I said, I would love to see um, the witch trials, right? Salem, which you right. when you got saw, like I would, I would love to go see historical events and be there for a minute. But if I had to choose to like live, like go back in time and say, this is where I'm going to stay. Yeah. I think I'd be a good frontiersman. Um, I, I wouldn't want to go so much further back to like the Egyptians or anything just because I feel like, and I'm not saying life wasn't hard in the times I'm picking, but there's like a different reality. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's like hardship on a level that I can't even imagine. Right. And I don't want to deal with that. All right, man. Well, let's take a real quick break. And when we come back, I'm going to test your geographical knowledge. It's time for an ad. Hi, folks. I'm Tyler Armentrout. I'm Christopher Whedon. I'm Zach Meck. And I'm Jerry Nash. And, and we're, we're the History, History Boys. Boys. And we're kicking your door down with a Bluetooth speaker and an 18-pack of beer. Ready to start a party. It's my favorite history podcast on all the internet, not just because I'm on it, but because I listen to every episode full blast in my house drives my wife up the wall. This is the History Podcast for all you cool kids that sat in the back of the classroom. That's right. We are a comedy history podcast or a history comedy podcast. Podcast, any which way you look at it. We are the History Boys. That is spelled B O I Z for those counting. And we are found anywhere you find your podcasts. Love you. Bye. Welcome back. Thank you for bearing with us through the break there. So, Jake, we've we've kind of proven that while well, you're a smart guy, you're 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 pretty you're pretty much an imbecile when it comes to anything to do Certain with things, like, yeah. yeah. Anything to do with I'm like dumb. learning about shit. So so as a as a uh, as a bald eagle freedom party loving son of a bitch from the good old US of A, I figured what what a better thing for us to do than for me to kind of ask you some world geographical questions. So Fuck. are you ready for this? No, because like when me and my wife would watch Jeopardy if these things came up, I know three rivers and two mountain ranges, and that's about it. And I, I would yell those answers out all the time, hoping that one of them was correct. All right. Now, from a cultural standpoint, you identify yourself as Hungarian. Am I correct on that? That's right. I am Hungarian. Okay, you are Hungarian. So we are going to start with Hungary, okay? Oh, fuck. So in talking with Hungary... Is Hungary closer to France or is Hungary closer to Egypt? France. Fuck. I was, I'm looking I was on hoping the map. you said Turkey. I was hoping. You, I, I like that you, you had this and you, all you did was pull up the map. And you, like, are you doing like the centimeter thing where you're trying to measure your pinky against it? Like, I just hope I was uh, the whole time you asked, I was like, please say Turkey because I know it's close to Turkey, right? It is close to Turkey. Yes. All right. I knew that one. So, so it is closer to Egypt than it is to France. So, uh, Fuck. we are, we are good there. Um, so ironically, you know, when I started thinking about, you know, well, I said France. Yeah. And it's closer to Turkey. Or I'm sorry, to Egypt than it is to France. So I was wrong. You were wrong. Okay. So again, we're going to go with, Tur- with, with, um, with Hungary. Okay. Is Hungary closer to the Ukraine? Or is Hungary closer to Zambia? Zambia. No. 
closer to the Ukraine. <laughs> Zambia is in Africa. Zambia is in Africa. Absolutely. And a Ukraine's near Russia, right? Correct. That's who's at the war with? Correct. Yeah. All, yeah. Right. All right. So, it's, well, okay. so which island is bigger? Hmm. We're going to go with Indonesia or Malaysia. Indonesia. You're correct. Good for you. Oh, yeah. I got That was a guess. That's Good a for pure you. freaking luck. It just sounds bigger. <laughs> there are a number of countries that are adjacent to China, meaning that they share a border. Okay. Give me three countries that share the border of China. Russia. No. Korea. Yes. Russia's against the border of China, isn't it? No. Isn't it north? It's north, yeah, but they, they don't to touch. Their... Yeah, they touch because they try to steal their wheat fields all the time. It's north, but they don't touch. They're separated by, by North Korea and Korea. Okay. Well, Korea's up in between them. I thought it was to the right. It's it's to the right. It would be east. <laughs> yes. But they don't. But it's Russia it's, does it's not. Up in there. Russia does not touch China. They do not share a oh, border. Okay. So I got one out of. T- I had. Do I get four guesses? Four then? guesses. I got one wrong or. All right. So Korea. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, technically I'll get two. North and South Korea. <laughs> okay, fine. Because that's probably going to be the and, only two and, you have correct. And then uh, Thailand. No. Oh fuck! Who, so who's who is Mongol Mongolia? Right? No nope. Mongolia there. All right. All right so I'm you have um, Kazakhstan, Kurdistan, a lot of the stands. Okay, Pakistan, <laughs> Afghanistan. Right? You have the stand. <laughs> they all touch the stand China. Part of the map. Yeah. Uh, wow. India. You also have um, Laos. Actually, Laos is an island, but Thailand, uh, Myanmar. Um, Vietnam is close. Well, I said Thailand. You said no. Yeah, Thailand actually doesn't touch because it's separated by Burma or or Myanmar. Um, Burma. And then you also have North Korea, South Korea, and Mongolia. I don't think Burma's a country. Okay. (laughs) So. I've never even heard of Burma. Is it South America or is it Africa? You ready? Oh, okay. All right. So we're going to go with Somalia. Or we're going to go with Paraguay. Paraguay is uh, South America. Somalia is Africa. Okay, excellent. We got that good. I know food. I know that. I know South America pretty well. What is closer? What is the closest country to Australia? Antarctica. <laughs> I don't think Antarctica is like <laughs> officially a country. That counts. That counts. I don't think it's officially a country. Um, then it would be. Well, New Zealand's not its own country, right? I don't think New Zealand is its own country. I it, I could be wrong, and if I am, then 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 you're still wrong because then there would be one other one. Africa, no. Oh, where? dude, <laughs> Australia to China is closer than Australia to How? Africa. Oh, okay, well, okay, okay, but is it South America? No, dude, South America is on the opposite fucking side. Wait, you're saying country. The, South America is a continent, right? It's not a okay, whole country? Yeah, yeah, South America is a continent, and so is Africa, if we're being, if we're being appropriate here. Oh, yeah, fuck me. But, all right. So is Burma. I'm learning so much right now. Right? Oh, my goodness. I, I, right, love, the, I love the fact that we're doing this. Okay, so... One final question for you. Is okay. Iceland covered in ice? Yes. Oh, I know this from the Mighty Ducks, too. Iceland is very nice, and Greenland is covered in ice. When the blonde chick is with Emilio Estevez eating ice cream. <laughs> so which which country is larger, Iceland or Greenland? Greenland. Oh, well, you're, man, impress the shit out of me. That's because I want to go there and eat rotten Greenland shark because it's poisonous. Disgusting. Until you hang it in a barn, which has to be very far away from the cities because it stinks so bad. Speaking of things stinking so bad, (laughs) which time period do you think had the hottest women based on attire? (sighs) That's rough. Because here, here, I have a lot of thoughts on this. So we'll get into those. But let's okay. let's put this just to America itself. Time period for America now. They don't wear clothing. 
<laughs> you think that America, <laughs> like like women now, are hotter than women in, let's say, the 70s? Oh, yeah. Or the 80s? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Dude, 80s was all about Bush. That's because, dude, her, their hair was so teased. And back then, they liked coke, cocaine, either huge fake titties or no titties, and they were too skinny. Like, women are thick now. They're thick like milkshakes, and I want it. I, th- I would argue that women were thick back then, too. Yeah, but not in a good way. Like, not that they wanted Like, I think that you're saying, I, I, I get you're saying that, but I, I do think that there's, there is an obesity problem in the, in the world right now, specifically in the United States. And I do think that if you look at, like, the 70s and 80s, it was not nearly as big of an issue, big being a pun there, a big pun forever. Um, and the, the thing about, about weight is that you look at people who they called fat back then, and they weren't really that fat. Right. Well, okay. What 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 period do you think women were hottest in America? Because other than that, I'm going with like the '40s housewife. So the '40s housewife, when you're when you're up fucking at war, and you're just yeah. you can't see her because I'm dreaming of her in a and, photo. And there's and there's the dude who who couldn't you know be in the fucking military she's playing in a league of their because own because he's missing a chromosome and he's just next door just banging your wife every day. Yeah, because I'm in Antarctica, the biggest country next to Australia. <laughs> um, I don't know. I kind of think that the the fifties, the fifties yeah. had some oh, hot stuff. When you just got back from war, yeah. When you just got back from war, and and you've just found out your neighbor was banging your wife. Yeah, well, like, dude, and now you're mowing your own lawn, right? I think the whole pinup girl thing of it all, like back then when pinup girls first started to come out, like that was that was pretty hot. That was pretty erotic. Marilyn Monroe had a career off of that. I don't really find Marilyn Monroe attractive. And actually, if you look at her, like, I mean, I don't think that she's not pretty. She's obviously pretty. I just don't find her like as sensual, I guess, as you'd see in today's society. But I do think one of the things about um, that time period, though, is that it's a, it's very much a caricature now. Like if you look at modern art of that time period, it's very much a caricature of what it was. I look at, um, you know, actresses back in the day. They were thick in a good in a good way, dude. We've talked about our love of thick women. They were thick in good ways, and I I appreciated that. I also like the fact that when they would wear bathing suits, like it was an actual bathing suit and not like a piece of floss. It's like, but you're a lingerie guy, right? Like you like a little bit of the intrigue. I mean, right? sometimes, yeah. Well, what, all right. What what time period in the world do you think had the hottest? Mm. That's a great question. Can we, like, I still think that there was some sort of, like, Amazonian time frame. And they had, like, Prehistoric, women Vikings. Hairy and grunty. That just were, you know, like Brienne of Tarth off of Game of Thrones. Like, they were just badass. Like, death by snoo snoo. I'd be all about that life. Okay. So you want to fuck Joan of Arc. I found that out. Um, prehistoric times. I want them as raw as possible. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm. All I imagine is smells. Like, <laughs> like that's all. I've, I've always thought of a few things whenever I've watched like Game of Thrones or anything. Like, one, how did women deal with periods? It seems like a nightmare. Two, how did people deal with shaving? And it's like, <clears throat> I love, I love the natural musk of a woman in all her parts. And I hope a woman enjoys the musk of me <laughs> in all my parts. But can you imagine going to war and you come back to that and it's just a, a rank fest? It's like it's like a block of blue cheese trying to ram oh. itself into a mouse hole. Like it's Bro. just so bad, B word. That's how I feel though. That's what I think of. I think of like, man, it's gotta stink. Like everything's gotta stink. Like like your breath, like like your hair, like just everything's gotta be stinky. Everything's got to <laughs> be stinky. Do you not think of those things? No, I do. Like obviously, like caveman time, right? Like nobody wears deodorant. It's like it's not a thing. Even medieval, right? Like all those times, it's all just stinky puss. Let me put armpit. it to you this way. Let me put it to you this way. I think that women post the invention of toilet paper are probably my favorite women because when you would shit and not wipe yourself off. That's probably where I'm drawing the line. Yeah, they always wiped. People always wipe. Well, yeah, leaves or whatever else. 
But there was a point in time where you didn't have a whole lot. Like, what if you were trapped in a desert? What are you wiping with in a desert? I think you're pretty dehydrated, so it's coming out pretty solid. You don't need to wipe as much. That's a really that weird. Is that... No. Explain that, chef. <laughs> well, I don't know. Like, if you're. I mean, also, they didn't have Taco Bell. So, I mean, how bad could the shit? People ate more fiber back then. Yeah, so but you just said that people can solid. drink fucking water from a pond and end up dead from, like, diarrhea. Yeah, diarrhea. <laughs> yeah those are the people that don't wipe because they're dying of diarrhea. <laughs> it all stinks. It all stinks, me word. See, it all stinks. All right, all right, all right. Let me ask you this way. Would you rather fuck a woman from the medieval times or a woman on the prairie? Pioneer times. Prairie. Medieval times, she's in her little hut or castle or, you know, your stone house in England where it's dark and dank and rats running everywhere and you're pooping in a hole. Or the pioneer times where you're out running from Indians and hoping to stay alive eating beef jerky. I'm going to say prairie. And the reason why I'm going to say prairie is because I think that there was a little bit more decorum uh, as far as like washing. Like while while it may have not washed on a regular basis, meaning daily or whatever, I still think that they washed within some sort of routine. I just think of like medieval times as like you've got you've got a, a monster in your snatch. Like it's got teeth. It's just it's gross. Would you rather bang a hooker? from the you know egyptian times or one from the wild west oh man you know the horror houses that existed way back then yeah they were burners dude i'm sure that they were all burners all syphilis and shit um but it's not to say that they weren't in that in the egyptian times either all right, let's go with the egyptian times do i have a reason no but i think that it'd be more intriguing do I have a reason? No, but I, I'm I think it'd be more it. intri- intriguing, <laughs> more intriguing. So let, let me ask you this, dude. Okay. So you come home from World War II. Okay, you've been gone yeah. for eight months. You've been on the battlefield. You've had friends die. You've, you've, you went to Normandy. Like all of your buddies died right there. You're pretty fucked up. Okay. You come, okay. you come home. You made it out. You've got a bullet wound, but you're fine. Right. You made it out. You come home. You, you got married to your wife right before you left. You haven't even had a chance to make kids yet. You go home and she's got a period cup full of blood. But you know you want to clap cheeks. My question is this. Do you pull the period cup out with your fingers or do you pull it out with your teeth? Fingers. You clapping cheeks? Yeah, because I could lane frost that and ride with one arm up in the air for eight seconds. I can't do that with a bull bull nose in my mouth. It's Does that true. make sense? It's true. I could totally I could totally like, you know, lean back and, and ride hard. Um yeah, no, dude. I, I I I have no fear when the beaver dam's broken down, the red rivers are flowing, I never stop it going. Like I'll 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 have that. See, I've got a, a period that stop doesn't stop anything but a sentence, baby girl. Like it's just a thing. It's just a thing. It's just a thing. I think I think that finishes our episode. It's just That's a thing. Disgusting. A period no, doesn't. A period. You you it, it you know what it ended this show. It ended this show. It probably <laughs> probably. You're you're not wrong. Well, Jake. So we. Oh, um, man. Thanks thanks again, man, for for helping to come up with uh, with this. I I want to ask you one more question on our way out. Okay. What historical time period? needs a sitcom situational comedy if if you want me to tell you what that means needs a sitcom made out of it so what i mean by that is is think of the office okay or think of parks and rec or Mm -hmm. big bang or whatever you want what time period in history needs to have it explored more with a sitcom the great depression really yeah make it fucking hilarious dude Let's watch people cut peas in half and laugh about it. I actually like that idea. Like, like, oh, little little Johnny stole a loaf of bread and he, he's getting his ass whooped. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. That that's what I want to watch. I want to watch that time period. I guess the only other one would be, um, I mean, if you're doing a situational comedy, is all the guys involved, like writing the Constitution. 
Oh, see, that would be funny. And having them be like characters of the office. That would be like, funny. Like, you know, seeing them go home and be like, that George Washington, he's a fucking prick. Arr, right. Arr, arr. Like, you know what I mean? Like that. What about you? I would like, so we had it once. We had it once. And we it, only one time. And I'd like to see it explored again. Dinosaurs. Fucking love that show. Yes. And I would love to see dinosaurs in multiple seasons covering multiple different aspects of that time. I love how they handled the tar. I love how they handled like the, 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 the big ass rock hitting the throwing them off. The yes. Mountain. Yes. I want more of that shit. I think that that would be hilarious. Would you rather the dinosaurs travel in time and go to different time periods? Or would you rather like, like, Oh, all right. All right. All right. Would you rather have like creatures play like, like, you know, like moose from the frontier times? No, dude, I want it entirely dinosaurs is what i want and then and then honestly like you can you can kind of you know mock society a little bit like you know maybe like the the uh you know the tyrannosaurus rex can be like you have t-rex privilege right and then you right. turn it into like well you don't want to hang out with a stegosaurus because you know they're just unemployed all the time and they, they're so horny because yeah, they, they got horns yeah, right right so i would <laughs> love to see more plays on that because i think that would be hilarious but but yeah man I would like to see dinosaurs in all periods. Like I get what you're saying now. Like d- colonial dinosaurs, like right in the Constitution, would be pretty funny. But then again, the Simpsons have probably already done it because we all know Simpsons did it. Simpsons did it. Well, good shit, man. Well, with that, buddy. Good times. What do you got for me? Thanks for all the dirty talk. Come back, and get sanitized. If you're a fan of our show, be sure to check out this one to stay sanitized. Have you ever thought about having a beer with Ted Bundy? Or been anally probed at Area 51? Perhaps go to dinner with Jeffrey Dahmer? Taking a car ride with JFK? Or enter a romantic relationship with O.J. Simpson? If so, then crack a cold one. The Pub Time Podcast just might be for you.